Hey guys, Iri is here and welcome along to another video. You join me here today for the second round of the 2021 official FIA Manufacturer Series season. We're with VW for this season, as many of you will already know, because, well, Erin picked it. And she's picked me, apparently, the meta car here for round number two. So we're going to see if we can take advantage of that in this one. We're here in Quali just before the race. We're at Lago Maggiore West. I hope I pronounced that right. And last time, if you remember, I was here and had a terrible time in the YouTuber race. So I'm looking for redemption. We've got 18 laps here. Only hards are available for this one. We have enough fuel as well, so we won't need to make any stop at all. Meaning it's going to be just a 30 odd minute sprint. We're in the group fours this time, which means the first appearance of this season for the Sirocco. Now, this is a flowery clad Sirocco. So thank you all for all those who spent the time creating liveries for this and the Beetle. I've saved them all and I'm going to get through as many as I can throughout the season. There is only one other VW in the field as well, so this, if it is the meta, means that I don't have too much in the way of competition and the pressure will be even further on to have a good result here. My best lap ended up being a 1 minute 28.129, ending up about six hundredths of a second off pole, which was good enough for second place here. It was another very close business class lobby today. First to 16th, split by just over a second. So very excited, but a little bit apprehensive as we get this one underway. So as we accelerate up through the gears and I try and work out what button it is to actually look backwards, as you can see there, I've got my indicator on, which will remain on for the remainder of the race because I have no idea actually how to turn it off. But we're behind the E-Monaco Subaru driver for now. Just trying to take it nice and easy through these first couple of turns because this car has to do both the steering and the acceleration through its front wheels. And as we've got no pit stops planned, we have to be very, very careful of our tires. So the other Meta car is behind us, or the perceived Meta car is behind us, the other Scirocco there, and he is gonna make a move coming down into, well, I call it the corkscrew, I'm pretty sure it's not, uh, but we're gonna call it the corkscrew for now. But Pad Christian has made the move here, but. As I mentioned, I just want to take care of my tyres at this point. The slipstream is so strong here, and this thing is so fast in a straight line that these guys just aren't going to go anywhere really. And I need to sit back and work out how to get ahead, and more importantly, stay ahead. I need to get my head down here and see if we can break away from the pack in this first phase as well. So I'm going to try not to attack him as much as I want to, as long as I'm not losing too much time to the leader there and we can have a sit rep and decide on our next move depending on the situation as the race unfolds. As we jump ahead here to lap number two, you're gonna see the Scirocco up ahead who overtook us on lap number one go into the lead. Now this is very, very interesting. It's gonna have an effect on what we do next. If he pulls away from the Subaru, then we're gonna to have to make a move on the Subaru and go with him. If not, and I'm hoping he doesn't, then we can just sit back continue to look after our tyres and start planning what we do from here. As we come down the hill here to start lap number four, we've gotten our head down and we're now part of a four driver breakaway group. But up ahead, the Frenchman is gonna break early into turn number one, I break and then the TT hits the back of us. I'm gonna let the Subaru back through, I don't want the place that way, but the TT is then gonna drop back as you can see here, he got himself a one second penalty. Very unfortunate for him, but it's all part of the game. So we're gonna to have to see how this affects everything going forward. This is another part, something else we need to consider because that TT caught up with us pretty quickly. So as he drops away here, it's gonna be interesting to see if he then manages to catch up or not. So we're on lap number six now and the race is really starting to get on. We're over a third of the way through. We really need to start turning our attention to how we're gonna pull this off. We've wasted enough time procrastinating and seeing what's going on. We need to make a decision. Now, we're not often in this position. I need to start experimenting. As I said earlier, we need to work out how to get in front, but more importantly, stay there. If I find myself ahead at the wrong time, with this slipstream, I might lose the lead and not be able to get it back before the finish line. 
which considering that we rarely find ourselves fighting for wins on Gran Turismo Sport would be an absolute disaster. So I'm going to use the slipstream here to dive up the inside of the Subaru. We make the move stick and we're now side by side with the Scirocco. So it's going to be interesting here. Mano a mano with the fellow VW. So we're side by side here. I'm on the outside, which is then going to become the inside. He tries to cut us off. There's a little bit of contact there. And then we get a nice little bump from the E Monaco driver behind, which is going to keep us alongside into this right hander here, the double right which means he's just got no chance and he can see to the position and we are now in the lead of this race. And we kept the lead for another couple of laps and here on lap number eight, I find that being in front is not actually the best place to be. Well, on the last lap, it's not gonna be at least as the Sirocco is gonna get alongside here and take the place back into the corkscrew. I'm not really too worried about the Subaru or the TT. It's this car up in front that's the threat. And the only thing I think is standing in between myself and a victory in this one. So it was time to try something else. I decide that I'm going to get in front here. So I've got a run on the Scirocco up and over the crest before going down the hill towards the corkscrew. Now, as I make the move here, I didn't actually want to be in front. But also, I know that if I'm behind and they pin it to that right-hand side before this corner here, I'm not going to have any chance to overtake before the finish line. So you know how I always say that battling is slower? Well, I'm gonna try and use this principle to pull off a result in this one. So I've overtaken the VW in the hope that there's gonna be some fighting and then we're gonna be able to get away whilst they battle with one another. But we're gonna to need to be patient for that one. We need to wait for the opportunity to break that one second mark, which is the slipstream, and then we will be away. And I've got comfort and confidence that the longer that this race goes on, as long as they're in close proximity, the more the lads behind are going to want to have tracks position, which is going to lead to more battling and that potential gap that we need. But in the meantime, we've still got to try and save our tyres, just in case it becomes an out and out sprint. And just as we say this, coming into the first corner here on lap number 12, keep your eye on the radar as the Subaru, the French e Monaco driver, is actually going to take the position off the Scirocco. So this is warming up and something's brewing quite nicely I think and as we come out of the corkscrew here we're going to look behind and we're going to see that the Audi actually there in fourth place that served its penalty for hitting us earlier is back into the mix and he's in a battle they're going to actually end up both being overtaken by the Audi there you can just see him going up the inside keep your eye on the radar here and then you can see it confirmed on the Delta and as we look back the Audi has taken the position this could be my time I'm going to stay patient though and see what happens. Rejoining the action here on the very next lap, lap number 13, and this guy in the Audi is on an absolute mission. He's sizing us up here. I go defensive. He's almost going to fake to the inside, well, the outside, and then he comes back up the inside and takes the position, showing the effect of the slipstream here. Now, I cannot let him through. I just can't do it. It could be game over at this point. So I'm going to leave it in here as we come through the S's. He's going to try and shut the door on us here. Can't quite get it done. There's some contact. And there is another car right in the mix as well. The Spaniard in the other Scirocco. So look at them here. The other Scirocco has gone up the inside. They're side by side here at this point. We're just trying to hit our apexes here. We don't want to get an off track. Not an off track. We're not playing high racing. We don't want to get a penalty. But look they are beginning to drop back a little bit. And he's gonna leave it in, the Audi TT is gonna leave it in and look at the gap it's gonna give us. This is finally the opportunity that we needed. Look at the Delta, we have broken the slipstream. They've battled away behind, they've been getting their suboptimal lines and we have now got the gap we need. And because we saved our tires earlier on and we know the situation here, we can now absolutely get our head down here and see if we can wrap this up over the next four or so laps. And getting my head down is exactly what I did here. They completely forgot about me. As soon as I broke that slipstream, they started concentrating on each other. I guess they thought I was out of reach, which I probably was considering the car that I was in and the fact that they had no slipstream to drag themselves back towards me with. And I just kept extending the gap. And this is where we find ourselves now. 
I am so happy with this one. Not just with where we are, leading the race, but how we got there. I resisted racing, I actually used my head a little bit, worked through the different scenarios and worked out what was best for me, driving smarter, not harder. Being patient when I needed to, and then use the car that I preserved underneath me to bring home this result. And as I come into the final straight here, I'm gonna bring home my first win on a Gran Turismo Sport video for a very, very long time. So obviously, I'm pretty ecstatic about that one. And as I come across the line to take my first victory in the FIAs in a long, long time, and we watch this wonderful cutscene, I just wanna say thank you. It hasn't been the greatest week for me in terms of sim racing. Something that was supposed to bring me so much joy did exactly the opposite this week. But all the support that you guys have given me and a win like this makes it all worthwhile. And as this closes out, guys, I am going to end the video there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.